Hey guys, it's Brad and welcome to my Karazi Jungle Guide. The Karazi Jungle is a custom minigame for Runex. The best way I can explain it is it's almost a combination of Last Man Standing, Dead Man Mode, and almost like an Ultimate Iron Man. As you can see on screen, the rewards for this minigame are actually amazing. You can do it once a day and you can get yourself a sack of riches, an ultimate prize box, and an epic crystal key. So once you teleport to the island, you'll be given a survival bag, which when opened will give you a machete, a knife, and some other random survival tools. So when you teleport to the island, the spawn you get is random, but all chests, NPCs, and objects will keep their same spawn. So once you know where these spawns are, it'll be very easy for you to gather supplies, heal, and store your items. I recommend using this map to learn the spawns. You can either pause the video here or you can go check out the forms post made by 52XP. It's extremely well done, it just isn't completed and some people like video format so that's what I'm bringing to you here. But that guide is extremely essential for learning the spawns and knowing what things mean on the island. When you get to the island you have a 10 minute protection for PvP. But if you get attacked and you attack players back or have your auto retaliation on, I believe your timer ends immediately so you might want to turn off your auto retaliation before coming to the island. So there's two methods you can use to get started. You can either run around after learning all of the chest bonds and loot the chest over and over and over until you have the supplies and trading sticks that you want. Or as soon as you get to the island, you can start instantly by chopping down trees and chopping them into trading sticks with your machete and knife. After about every five to 10 logs, you're gonna wanna sit there and cut them into sticks. Once you have a decent amount of sticks, you're gonna wanna go and find a tribal trader that will have things such as anti-poisons, adamant hosta, snake skin, things like that to get you geared up. One thing I like to add is that you can click on your trading sticks and click exchange to purchase Karamja gloves which increase any damage you do with a stab weapon. So once you've bought your snakeskin, adamant hosta, or you have weapons to defend yourself through the chest, the monsters you're going to want to start looking out for are the blood shaman, the jungle horror, the jungle titan, the jungle spider, the jungle savage, and of course the jungle demon. So before I go into how to kill each of the monsters, it is important to know that if you are going to hunt one of these monsters, such as the Jungle Titan, Forge Drops, you can get the Karazi monsters as a Slayer task on the Karazi Island. Located on the north side of the village, and will cost you 25 trading sticks to enter. Once there, you can trade the shop and actually see a bunch of really good items that are really useful on the island, especially the Jungle Totem, which is the only shield on the island that provides you with defensive stats. So first off is the Blood Shaman. All you have to do to kill it is protect from magic and some of its notable drops are runes, the amulet of glory, blood money, up to 500 if you're very lucky, arrows, and staves. Next is the jungle horror. To kill it you just pray melee and you won't take any damage and some of its notable drops are the karazi mask which is similar to a black mask in which will help you with slayer tasks that are karazi based on the island and give you more damage, cooked karambwans, raw foods, magic logs, and bowstrings. As for the Jungle Titan, this one actually has some mechanics to it. So what you're going to want to do is be praying melee and then watch out for its mage attack. It does have to charge up so you have time to switch your prayers. It's very easy once you get the hang of it and if you know how to do jads, that's even better. You keep your prey melee up and when you see it charge up the purple orb above its head and he like bends down, then you switch to pray mage and as soon as you take the damage, you switch back to pray melee. If you do this correctly, you will take zero damage killing it aside from poison. Notable drops from the Jungle Titan are Flasks, Brews and Prayers I believe, Amethyst Ammo, and the Karazi Set. The Karazi Set is the best in slot for ranged damage. The Jungle Spider and the Jungle Savage are the weakest monsters on the island and are very easy to kill, although they both have their own effects. If the Jungle Savage hits you, even if it's a zero, you do get poisoned. If the jungle spider hits you, even if it's a zero, it drains 10 of your run energy. So keep that in mind while you're running around the jungle and try not to pass them if you don't want to be poisoned or have your run energy drained. If you do want to go after some bigger drops, on the demon island there is a place called the pit, marked by an exclamation mark on the map. Once down there, there are three slayer monsters or bosses that spawn all the time with no chance of there being any like bad monsters such as a jungle spider or something. A monster I forgot to mention is the jungle dragon. I don't have footage of it, but if you come across it, I do not suggest fighting it unless you have range and you can safe spot it, or if you have prayer and an anti-fire potion. An anti-fire can be found on the island through chests and as drops. Alright, so now let's get into the jungle demon. So as you can see, you're going to probably run into something similar to me where there are more monsters around the jungle demon and you're going to take quite a bit of damage. What you want to do is pray mage 
and keep an eye on the jungle demon when he throws a black tornado you're gonna want to switch to range prayer and then switch back to mage prayer this is because it is more dangerous to miss a magic prayer than it is a range prayer so option one is to flick prayers like i am in the clip and kill the things around the jungle demon or you can tag the monsters around the jungle demon and run it out of range of the jungle demon and kill them away from the boss so that way you can run back to this chest and be able to kill it with no monsters around it until they respawn. As you can see, I'm missing some prayers. That's because I was having kind of ping issues. That's okay. If, as long as you're praying mage and switching to range, if you miss a couple prayers, it shouldn't be that big of a deal if you have food. One of the main drops from the jungle demon is the sun spear. The sun spear is worth about three bill off the island, which you can just teleport away with if you so choose, or you can keep the sun spear on the island and either PK with it or just do the jungle demon dailies with it, making it extremely easy and fast to get it done. I personally recommend range because rune crossbow and rune bolts are quite easy to get on the island and you can just pick them up as you kill the boss. But another alternative is to use Slayer Points and Trading Sticks at the Slayer Shop I showed you earlier and buy Leaf Bladed Battle Axe. It is very strong and with Piety and a Super Combat Pot, you can hit around up to 46 on the boss. So let's say you've done the daily, you killed the demon, and now you want to save some of your stuff for next time you want to come do the daily. This is possible, but the storage is limited. So as you see on screen, I have 15 items in my storage chest, which is the max you can get. As you can see at the top right, there is a green arrow pointing up. You can click that to upgrade the space in your chest. When you start on the island, you have a storage space of 5, and every time you go up, it costs 50 trading sticks. And you add on 50 each time. So the first one is 50, the next is 100, the next is 150, and so on. When you die in the island with these things in your chest, you will not lose them and they will stay there in the chest. But if you take them out and die with them on the island, you will keep three items if you're not scold, four if you protect the item, and they will be teleported with you off the island. So do not risk things you do not want to lose if you think you're going to die. So you're probably wondering, Brett, I have this blood money, I have trading sticks, I don't know what to do with this shit. Well, one of the best things you can do with your blood money is come to the blood money shop over here and actually buy cursed and karazi caskets. Both these caskets obviously have a random chance to give you a piece of that gear on the Karazi Island, which in turn is actually extremely OP because there is no way you can get a cursed item or a cursed blade even, which is the best in slot melee weapon on the island. If you have a cursed blade on the Karazi Island, you're basically unkillable. You'll be whacking people for like 60s and you'll be able to do the jungle demon so easily you won't even have to like grind the chests or anything like that. So two more things you can do on the island is one, fish and cook your own food, and two, you can actually note things if you want to keep supplies inside of your chest. What some people like to do is make multiple accounts. You're not allowed to multi-log inside of the Karazi jungle, but if you get two accounts to the same chest, you can actually drop trade yourself items as items appear instantly inside of the minigame. So what people like to do is have one account for food and ammo, bolts, things like that, and have one account with their gear to kill the demon. So for example, you can have one account sitting here fishing sharks and kawambwans while you have the other account looting the chest and killing the monsters. I don't mean at the same time, I just mean that's what the accounts can be used for. So as you can see, you can come over here and chop the trees, cut them, get trading sticks, buy your harpoon, buy your tinderbox, whatever you want to fish. Then once you're done, you can come over here and cook them and then run over to the tribesmen and note them for one trading stick each. You can unnote things as well for one blood money each. So as I said, of course the island is PvP. Ideally the two combat styles you want to have are range and melee, because having mage and tangle is insanely useful because you can keep people away from the bank chest. It just takes up way too much inventory space and if people turn and fight back, you're basically dead because you can't outlast them. As I said earlier, the game is similar to Dead Man Mode in the sense that when you die, they will get basically all of your stuff. Plus, if you take a look at my inventory, I do have noted Karwampons with me and Blood Money. That's because in the middle of the fight, you are able to use your noted food on the tribesmen and then type in the amount you want to unnote and then press 1 and you will unnote your food and fill your inventory again. So if you plan to PvP, you want to have noted food and blood money and trading sticks on you at all times. Some notable things is to make sure you don't forget to use the totem if you run low on prayer and you don't have any potions. It'll refill you to full prayer. 
If you just want to play defensively and you want to be able to escape if you get into a PvP situation you don't want to be in, you can buy a Shiloh Village teleport tab from the blood money shop for I believe 100 blood money. So if you're risking and you're getting attacked and you know you're not going to make it, just hit that tab and if you have 25 trading sticks, you can actually go through the door and use the bank in Shiloh Village which is safe and you can deposit your items and then teleport away. That's going to be it for this guide. If it did help you, please remember to drop a like on this video. It actually helps me a ton. I put quite a bit of work into this, so I hope it actually does help some of you. If I did miss something or you do have questions, feel free to message me in-game or comment on this video, and I'll be sure to answer as quick as I can. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.